Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Just wanted to show some of the projects the Lord's blessed me with. Uh, growing some seeds. Growing in here. Um, I hope things are doing okay in there. Sorry about that. But uh, I'm trying to think. Squash and zucchini. Okay, trying to grow some squash and zucchini. Um, and here I've got turnips going pretty good. Praise the Lord. And I have radishes. I don't know if I can get underneath the, the bag. I tried to do two other things like corn, but I didn't do it right, so I'm learning how to do things. I've got my three pots of tomatoes right there. This is my miniature greenhouse to try to grow stuff. And we'll get to it here in a bit. But when the Lord allows you to accomplish something, you do something great that you feel is great, the Lord allowed me to have a pond on the deck. And there's one of my fish. I don't know if he's showing. Oh, he disappeared. But this was a blessing. Sometimes you can, sometimes I can tap it. And then, if I can do this real quick, sprinkle some of this over there. You can start seeing him coming to the top. So he blessed me with this bomb pond, but I had to put the pond together. I had to put separate pots in there to get some plants growing because my water is naturally high and acidic and fish couldn't survive in it. So I had to get plants going. And there they start coming up. I had to do a lot of work here. So what do I do and how am I supposed to feel when, when you do something great that you feel is great? How are you supposed to feel? What are you supposed to say? Well, we're going to get to that. But uh, the Lord blessed me with learning how to ferment the chicken feed. So that's what those two buckets are. I'm fermenting chicken feed. And that way I can feed them food that's wet and it gets more vitamins when it ferments and it helps them with the eggs and the growth and it's supposed to save money on seed because when you put it down on the ground they eat it instantly versus the food that I put back in the backyard and they don't eat it then other birds will eat it and I even have rat problems sometimes mouse and rat problems so I'm trying to go to fermented food but I'm trying to grow things in here. One of the things I'm growing in this one is mint leaves. So I can use it with my tea. So it's just, when you're doing all this, these projects and you're getting all this stuff done, and we're going to get into some projects back here. I'm just showing some of the how it's springtime. When you see the flowers growing and flowers blooming, it's springtime. And it's a very beautiful day. Just a very beautiful day. It was raining, like sprinkling, about half an hour ago. And then it cleared up and we just have a beautiful sun coming out. But way back when, brothers and sisters in Christ, I showed you the project where I built this chicken coop. Well, the new addition is down below. Okay. We can go in from the front side first, but I added this whole section here for a reason. I have too many chickens and very little uh, nesting. But now, when I do my eggs and hatching eggs, I've got a spot to put the chickens when they get old enough. The light will keep them warm. They've got food, they got water, and they have this whole bottom area to get used to the other chickens. Because when they get big enough, you put them with the rest of the population. And I've got four more, or eight more uh, chickens that are babies that will be joining the, the rest of the, uh, the herd, if you want to say it like that. But uh, I sat back here, and we had the top part built already. And the top part's what we open up. And you look in there, I've already collected all the eggs this morning, so there's no more eggs. But, but I wanted another roosting spot too for them. When I have too many hens, they can roost down there. 
If I lift it up, it's going to lift the, uh, the light up. But gives me three more roosting spots. I don't know if you can see, but it lifts the light up, and I don't want to lose the, the light's positioning so the light's not resting against something. But the Lord blessed me, and I get out here, and I start planting. There's my celery. All around the outside is onions, red onions and yellow onions. I've got lettuce galore growing. This lettuce is looking amazing. I've already been able to pull some of this lettuce and start eating it. You pull from the outside, and the inside will grow up and fold out to the outside, and it keeps going until eventually it does a stick and starts blooming flowers. Then you know you're at the end. But all in there is, is red onions, and all in this half is green onions. And I forgot what they're called, but I plant something in this section that uh, it's a cross between an onion and a garlic. And I forgot what it's called, but something new that I'm trying. So, and I just feel great. You come out here and you look at everything and you're like, oh, you're planting stuff. I've got three barrels here. That's where the... Um, Three containers here there's one right there that's where my tomatoes are gonna go I've got uh, two different uh, herbs here I have to remember what they're called but one's like a lemon herb it's like a lemon mint and one's balm and stuff that I can use in teas so I'm trying to start herb start an herb garden so I can use it with my tea and everything there I got a scratch mark, which means I got to set the trap out again to see if I'm getting uh, raccoons or whatnot. My asparagus is supposed to come back every year, and it's starting to come back pretty good this year. But eventually, that whole square, I'm hoping to get it where it just grows tons of, of that stuff every year. Once I get enough, I can eat some and leave some to grow so it keeps growing back every year. But when you just have a little bit, you got to let it a little bit go. Um, I planted uh, these jalapenos too soon. I had them indoors, brought them out, thinking that we, we got warm weather. But then it got really cold again, and they didn't like the cold, and it kind of shocked them. So I don't know. This one might survive, but honestly, I think I might end up having to dig all three up and put something else here. I have my two potatoes right here. I went ahead and put the potatoes in and everything, and when it starts growing, I'll start filling it in even more and more and more and as it fills up. I got strawberries, onions, garlic. This is all garlic on this side. I got to take them all out and separate them and start again, which is that's great about garlic. You never have to buy them if you're growing them. You just take one or two of the garlics and you break them up into the smaller cloves and you plant those and you get a whole new set of garlic again. Um, so you say, well, why? Are you bringing this up? Why is this a big deal? You know, the Lord let me plant that tree. And I worked hard setting that section up and, and everything. And I put the uh, strawberries in there. And I'm going to be planting my zucchini and my gar uh, zucchini and squash in this section right here. The squash I got is more like a vine so I can grow them on the outs on the, the circles of the bricks. And then on the inside I can plant three of my uh, zucchinis. And let it just grow up and be big. But you ask, well, what's the big deal? Well, we're going to have a set down talk. And I'm going to sit there if that's okay. Not kind of a new setting. We're going to sit there and we're going to talk. When you do something great and you feel good about something, is, is it okay to be prideful? And say, look what I have done. Look what I did. I mean, look at all this stuff. Putting in the pond. Built this whole backyard when you looked at it before, it was just grass and had these three on this half. Everything you're seeing in this picture, it was completely covered up with three huge flower bushes that's kind of like a wild flower around here. So, almost a, th a third of the yard on its way to half the yard was covered. Look at what I did. No, what do I do? Well, we're going to sit down and talk about that. Is it okay to feel good about get the the Lord letting you do some work and accomplish things, absolutely. But what are we supposed to do? There's Victoria wanting in. <laughs> but so let's get back to sitting down and talking about the Word of God. Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I just wanted to do a quick video. Okay. 
on what do I say, you know, pride, when it comes to pride, there's a big push and in the world and Babel buildings and some false teachings online where they're trying to push that pride is okay. It's okay to take pride in your work, to take pride in the work of others. You know, if you're a father and you have a child that does good and to take pride in their work, okay. Um, there was a comment section under one of Brother JT's videos and it says, I have a question relating to this topic when it comes to people teaching it's okay to have pride and to say pride is a, pride, use the word pride is okay as far as in your life so if someone feels good and happy about something they did a good job with or something their child did or something is that always pride another way to say it I guess would be like is there a right way to feel good about something without being prideful or not really Okay. Brother JT responded with Proverbs 15, 13. It reads, A merry heart, Proverbs uh, 15, 13. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but the sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. Okay. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. When you have a merry heart. Proverbs 17, 22 says, A merry heart doth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. Okay, it's okay to have a merry heart, but I think the real thing comes down to is pride comes in when you take all the credit. I already did the video doing the walk around and everything. Look at me. Look what I've done. Look what everything here. Is that what we're supposed to have is have pride? I'm, I take pride in my work and my accomplishments and what I've done. Okay. Psalms 32.11 reads, Psalms 32.11 be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. You have an upright heart. You have a merry heart. What's supposed to, what are we supposed to do? Be glad in the Lord. That's where the merry heart comes from. As a Bible-believing, God-fearing man, when I do something, one of the things, I don't know if I'll ever get around to doing a study on this, because it just should be second nature, but... Throughout the Old Testament to the New, you have people who ask God, Lord, what should I do? Asking God permission on everything. Okay, something big's coming through, what should I do, Lord? And then you have people who fail to ask the Lord for His, for His counsel, seeking the counsel of the Lord. And bad things happen. Okay? Because they didn't seek the counsel of the Lord. But how often do you, when you pray to the Lord, do you say, oh, just throughout the day, Lord, like today, I went and walked on the beach. And the Lord blessed me. I have my little beach collection table in the house. Um, the Lord blessed me with some beautiful sea glass, uh, a tooth. I think it's a shark's tooth. It looks like one uh, that I found on the beach. Um, but a lot of sea glass, some shells and some bones and some wood, uh, uh, driftwood. But it's all about do I take credit for it? Everything I found, everything I worked for, before I did that, and to, I don't take credit for it, but before I did it, I don't want to lose my train of thought, um, I always ask, Lord, today, if it be your will, can we go to the beach and walk on the beach a little bit? I pull out my cue cards. We start going over memory verses and talk with the Lord as I'm walking on the beach looking for stuff on the beach. And I always do that a lot more now, praise the Lord. I'm always like, hey, Lord, if this be your will tomorrow, can we get those uh, uh, tomatoes that I showed earlier, the tomatoes planted, the zucchini planted, the squash planted. Lord, if it be your will, can we go for a walk? Lord, if it be your will, if it be your will, it's you asking God for his counsel and his permission. And there's times where I say, Lord, if it be your will, can we get this done? And we don't get it done that day because it rained. It rained all day Saturday, praise the Lord. All day Sunday, praise the Lord. A, a big prayer request for me, brothers and sisters in Christ, is for my health. Stay in the course. Stay in the course is more important. But he good health helps, <laughs> you know. My health and stay in the course is the two primary prayer but a side prayer would be for water uh, I think we're gonna have a drought this summer I really do so I'm already working hard to try to conserve water now but I always ask the Lord his permission Lord if it be your will can we do this if it be your will can I do that okay we've kind of lost that but at the same time when you're doing something and God says okay I'm gonna allow you to do this and you do something like doing a garden 
walking on the beach, working on your car, whatever project that you're doing, whatever work you're doing with your own hands, we can't forget that we're supposed to be glad in the Lord and rejoice. Lord, thank you for allowing me to accomplish all this. Lord, thank you for making this possible, Lord. I couldn't do this without you, O oh Lord. Okay? And when it comes to my health, there's a lot of times um, I work for 30 minutes and then sit down for 30 minutes. I work for 30 minutes and sit, that's my whole day, off and on, off and on. I'll sit and pray with the Lord for 30 minutes and I'll get up and try to do some physical work for 30 minutes. And when I look at the stuff that God has allowed me to accomplish, I couldn't do it without the Lord. Okay. I give the Lord uh, credit for everything and give Him glory. Okay, Be glad in the Lord. Psalms 35, 27 says, Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually that the Lord be magnified. Continually let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of His servants. When you're prospering and you're doing well and you're doing all these great things, you don't go, hey, look what I did. Okay? You magnify the Lord. And that's the big push more than anything. When this whole pride thing, this whole pride thing is about taking Jesus Christ out of the equation. They can try to add him to the equation to deceive you with good words and fair speeches. Well, I mentioned Jesus. It doesn't matter. You're still trying to take away Jesus Christ and make it all about the person. Elevating the flesh. Would we read about the Bible says how men love the praise of men more than the praise of God? Look what I did and get praise of men. Okay? Uh, Lord, thank you for doing this for me. And in the end, when you stand before Jesus Christ at the judgment seat, well done, thou good and faithful one. Well done. That's what I want to hear from the Lord. I want praise from the Lord, not from men. Okay? Isaiah 29, 19 says, reads, The meek also shall in increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. There's something to be said about being poor, okay, and meek. When you humble yourself, that's when you find yourself giving God more credit and more glory than you did before. When you weren't meek, when you weren't poor. Well, I'm starting to have a lot of things. I'm starting to have all this. And you start, you start giving yourself all the credit. Be careful with that. Okay? How are you supposed to feel? I'm supposed to have joy in the Lord. Peace and joy. Okay? Uh, a merry heart. Thank you, Lord. Okay? Be careful that it's not coming back to you and it's becoming all about you. Look what I did. It's all me. Okay? Colossians 3.16 reads, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Yeah, that's good. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. There's times I get very happy with what the Lord's allowed me to do and what He's done for me. I'll start singing hymns. I'll walk around and start singing hymns. I get so happy sometimes. But I give God the glory. That happiness comes from the Lord. The things He's allowed me to accomplish, that's all the Lord. Verse 17, And whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Everything we do in word or in deed, if I happen to say the right things, to lead someone to Christ, or I say the right things to encourage a brother or sister in Christ, to God be the glory. If I'm doing right, and I'm living right, and I'm accomplishing a lot of great, good or even great things, to God be the glory. When I fail the Lord, that's me. I failed the Lord. Okay? But what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to give God glory. Don't forget that, brothers and sisters in Christ. Everything we do, I want to feel great. You're supposed to feel great as a Christian. When God does amazing things in your life and allows you to accomplish things that you thought you couldn't do, and even the basic day-to-day -day stuff that you know you can do, you still need to make sure to give God glory for it. We're supposed to feel happiness. We're supposed to have joy. But that joy is in Jesus Christ. That peace is in Jesus Christ. 
Ephesians 5.19, we read, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, in your heart. When you do something great, that's the best thing you can do is start speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Prayer, singing old hymns, reading the, start quoting memory verses. Lord, thank you for this. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I wouldn't have had the strength to do this without you, O Lord. You give God glory. You give Him credit. Okay? You don't take credit for yourself. That's what pride's all about. It's about me, myself, and I. Look what I've done. Okay? I can make it on my own. The lost world. I can make it to heaven on my own. I remember that old study I did once. I came across it again. I was just praising the Lord for giving me the idea for it. And the title of the study was Finding the Back Door with a Question Mark. Because that's what most of the world tries to do. They don't want to go through the front door, the right door to heaven. The true plan of salvation. They keep trying to go to the back door. And that pride, I can make it on my own. I can do it on my own. Okay. Verse 20. Giving thanks always. Thanks always for all things unto God. All things. And the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Okay, brothers and sisters, I always push this, but I want to do a quick video to encourage the brethren as this spring's coming on. There's some tough times coming ahead, and we're doing a lot of projects. Everybody's got their projects and wanting to do things for the Lord. Some people are starting indoor gardens to grow edibles indoors. Some people have a little space outdoors that they can start growing some gardens. They'll start, brothers and sisters in Christ, as tough as things are getting out there, you have to go for walks, get out in nature and go for walks and talk with the Lord and get away from, you know, the city sometimes and get away from people sometimes uh, and just spend some time with the Lord, like the vexation from the lost world. And He's going to give you a lot of projects and a lot of things to do. And I want to keep reminding the brethren that remember to not let pride creep in. Remember to keep giving the Lord credit for everything. Luke 17, 11. Okay, I love this story. I did a uh, courageous man, foolish man. Okay, it's the ten lepers, I think I called it. Okay, uh, were they courageous men or foolish men? But I want to read the story again. Luke 17, 11. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers. Ten men, they were lepers, which stood afar off, and they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they went, they were cleansed. Now we're going to read here that only one of them gave God glory, but the other nine was, I went, I did what I was told, I did it and I'm cleansed. I'm good to go and they go about their way like they earned it. Like they deserved it. What happened to the tenth guy? What did the tenth guy do? Look at verse 15. And one of them, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. No, I earned it, I earned it. I did what I was told and I earned it and all the suffering I've been through and everything, I earned this healing and it. He glorified God. And fell down at fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samarian, a Samaritan. Verse 17. And Jesus answered, said, Where are there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? In other words, the other nine men. There are not found that return to give glory to God save this stranger, one man. It was a Samar Samaritan. It wasn't a Jew. That's why it's called a stranger. That's why Jesus says a stranger. And he said unto him, Arise and go thy, wat, thy way. Thy faith have made thee whole. Okay? Don't forget. doesn't matter how tough your life gets or how bad things are happening. When God lifts you up and does something great for you, Give Him glory. 
Don't think, well, it's about time I had good things come my way. I deserve this. Don't act like that. Okay? But getting back to the main point, you're doing work and you see that you're doing some great work, give God the glory. You have a son or daughter and you see them do something great, give God the glory. Someone comes up to you and says, man, your son is well behaved. To God be the glory. God has taught me to raise my son in the admonition of the Lord. Or my daughter in the admonition of the Lord. Oh, your daughter's a great painter. To God be the glory. It's serious, brothers and sisters of Christ. You've got people, I just can't believe you've got people out there claiming to be Bible-believing, God-fearing men, and they're teaching that it's okay to be prideful in certain situations or certain uh, environments or certain ways that it's okay to be prideful in any way shape or form pride says it's about me myself and I I don't need God that's what pride is God had nothing to do with it I don't need God it's all about me God says you're not supposed to have pride pride is a sin you need to get that pride out so then you can keep your eyes on Jesus Christ and stay focused on him and give him all the thanks and all the glory whether in word or in deed do all to the glory of God we read that whatever you say whatever you do when someone tries to say hey you did a great job you give God glory when you try to pat yourself on the back you need to stop that and go I need to give God glory thank you Lord thank you thank you for getting this sin out of my life thank you Lord for helping me accomplish I'm looking at me the garden I got a lot of other projects I've got to do. I had to rearrange the whole house and clean the house top to bottom. That house gets so dusty so fast. Okay. When you're one man living in a, in a place and you're trying to get all this stuff done and do all this stuff, the Lord, it's a blessing that the Lord helps me to get a lot of this stuff done. Okay, so I want you to walk away, brothers and sisters of Christ, from this video, giving God glory for everything in your life. Everything, no matter how small. No matter how trivial you think it is, give God glory for it. Give Him thanks for it. Talk to the Lord about everything. Don't forget to ask the Lord permission. I know we didn't do scripture to, on that. That was just a side note that was like I said, I've got a Bible study. You can go to the Old Testament and see how the Jews, when they would ask for God for His, His counsel and obeyed Him, good things happened. When they asked for God's counsel and disobeyed him, bad things happened. Then there was times where they didn't even ask for God's counsel and bad things happened because they should have asked God his counsel. Lord, what do you think? Lord, what should I do? If it be your will, Lord, can I do this? Can I do that? Okay. Make your life 100% about Jesus Christ. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ at all times. So, remember that. And then the two prayer, the prayer requests for my health, that my walk with the Lord stays strong. You know, the care, we're going through these studies right now, the cares of this world coming in and distracting brothers and sisters in Christ, starting with me. And deceitfulness of riches are coming in and lust of other things. Once again, uh, temptation. The old man's always trying to come back. Your addictions are always, one minute you think you have victory, 100%, God has given you victory, not you have victory. God has given you victory over that stuff, but out of the blue you can be side, be distracted and attacked sideways with temptation and you can choose to sin and fall back into that sin that you thought, I thought I had victory over it. Well, you took your eyes off Jesus Christ and I've done that. Okay, I failed the Lord plenty of times in my walk with the Lord. So, I really need prayer for that and I think we all do, but me, I'm asking for prayer for me. I need prayer to stay strong and keep standing and walking for the Lord and keeping my eyes on Jesus Christ. And the third prayer request that I have, brothers and sisters in Christ, is the drought. That there's plenty of water to make it through to the end because I, like I want the garden to be good. And um, there's just a whole water system. The tank has got tons of water in it, but the pump doesn't work. I had a guy come in and look at the pump finally. And one guy's like, I think I can fix it, and he never came back. Another guy said, well, I know I can fix it, and he never came back. And I can't, I call him, he's not, I guess he's not working anymore or something, I don't know. So I found a guy that's young, a little bit younger. He's hardcore uh, plumber, he knows what he's doing, and he says he wants to redo the whole system. The whole system is 30, it is, it's 30 to 40 years old, 
and he says the system is not a good system it needs to be updated and we need to do a bigger tank uh, with a different pump than I bought and try to get a different filter because the filters I've got in the garage are, are have gone bad and there's just so much that needs to be done with the water here so I'm just living off the cistern the water in the cistern and I'm just praying that the cistern doesn't go dry this summer and I have a feeling that it might go dry um, so I've really been praying a lot about that that the Lord helps me save water and do everything I possibly can to save water here and there and I and I just really could use prayer for that, brothers and sisters in Christ. So I'd like to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. My love for you, brothers and sisters, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm just trying to help you keep your eyes on Jesus Christ because every time I take my eyes off, it, it hurts my relationship with the Lord. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. I'll see you in the next video.